Hello, Minions. It's been a while since I've talked to you. Uh, there are a few reasons for that. Uh, one of the more boring reasons is that we had a hacker infesting our website. Uh, you know, went to a lot of trouble to get rid of the hacker until finally we had to, uh, Captain Skyhawk uh, nuked the site from orbit and then he rebuilt it from the ground up. So that's why it looks new and fresh. Uh, so we took care of that problem. There's a couple other projects I've been working on that have taken my time. Can't talk about most of them uh, quite yet. I mean, they're not forever secret. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, I did go to DragonCon, which is something that I had wanted to to talk about. And so uh, I'm going to give you a little DragonCon update today and then an apology uh, for uh, one particular group. And that is uh, DragonCon, <clears throat> uh, as some of you know, there's the Comics and Popular Arts Conference, the Comics and Popular Arts Conference. Uh, and you can find out more about that at comicsandpopularartsconference.org. Uh, and it's an academic conference that we put on every year. Uh, and we uh, work with the DragonCon track, so we actually embed it in DragonCon in coordination and cooperation with those tracks. And so if you're an academic and you're interested, go to comicsandpopularartsconference.org. Uh, I assume our new call for papers for next year will probably go up in a month or so, maybe two months, I suppose. We'll do the CFP. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're always interested in, in, in papers for that. Um, and if you're not an academic, please go to those sessions. They're really, they're really interesting. Um, I think they're interesting, especially if you're not an academic, um, not even, even if, but especially if you're not, because, you know, uh, if you're, uh, uh, have been to any kind of cons, uh, before or just any gathering of nerds, uh, one thing that you find pretty quickly is that the, uh, you can have a lot of fun meeting with people that you you know online, and you can have a good time talking about these things. But there comes a point at which you're rehashing the same conversations over and over again. And what people who wander into these sessions find, I'd say usually about a third of the people in the sessions are people who are, uh, you know, they're academics, and usually about two thirds there, I would argue, I would guess, uh, are non-academics. They're always surprised to find out there's a lot more going on in the works that they love. And it usually gives them something deeper to take back. Uh, you know, some, uh, I've talked to people who said that they, they like going to these sessions because it gives them new things to take back to their talk to their friends about, uh, uh others who just enjoy being able to appreciate the things they already love, be able to appreciate them on a deeper level. So I would urge you, uh, you know, uh, those of you who, are interested uh, next year to look into what Comics and Popular Arts Conference is doing. Um, so uh, there were a couple of things that I was involved in there, and I just wanted to uh, report on those uh, within the Comics and Popular Arts Conference. Uh, one uh, was dealing with a session on role-playing games in the classroom. And several people... Uh, said after the fact uh, that it had coincided with something else that they wanted to do. Uh, and I've had more than the normal number of people who have asked about using role-playing games in the classroom, and, and they asked if I had recorded that, and I, I did not. Uh, in fact, I had intended to, and I totally forgot to at the beginning. Uh, and I didn't ask my co-host, which uh, is always very uh, rude if you were to do that. Um, so I just want to give you some of the ideas I have about using role-playing games in the classroom here in this public space. So the, 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 I, I want to make a distinction between uh, uh, using a game between uh, game-based learning and game of gamifying things, you know, gamification is a big thing. It's actually politically 
a, a politically potent topic at the moment. But um, what gamification really is, is gamification is taking something and, and turning it into a game to encourage people to do it. Uh, so, for example, I mean, gamification is is hot at the moment, but it's not in any way new. You know, if, when you were a kid, uh, if you had a, you know, your teacher had uh, over the chalkboard or, or dry erase board, depending on uh, how old you are, maybe a little cut out race car or something. And, the you know, the more books you read or the more you did something, the further along your car went. That's gamification in the kind of basic way, turning what you have into a game. Um, there is, you know, very often we gamify grades and other things like that. Um, and so it's often used as a motivate motivating factor. Um, so there's that. And my view is that role playing games are generally not a good way to gamify a classroom. Uh, the reason for that is they're just too complicated and good gamification isn't going to distract from the activity over much. It will stay focused on the activity. It will just make the activity that you're trying to encourage, uh, more fun and provide more, more motivation. Uh, so I would argue that that role playing games particularly are not good for gamification, but gamification is a good way to motivate motivate people in the classroom. Uh, depending on what the thing is, you have to have a, a discrete outcome. The other is game based learning, and game based learning, I think, if you're using it in the classroom, it must be very specific. So what do I mean when I say in the classroom? Well, some schools I'm seeing more and more schools. Uh, I know, uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, Trey Price of Two Beards Play. If you're not in, if you're not watching Two Beards Play, uh, their video games, and then they also have Table Scraps, which is their uh, their tabletop gaming channel. Uh, you know you should be. Uh, but he uh, runs a uh, a class, or sorry, not class, a club for role playing games uh, in his school. And the normal way that people will defend role playing games in the classroom is say things like, well, they teach you about other cultures. They teach you about geography. They teach you about statistics. They teach you all those things. And it's true. They do teach you those things, but they teach them to you in a very unfocused way. And so what I would argue is that in that way, role playing games are probably best, uh, not in the classroom, but that there should be a role playing game club in any school, uh, you know, that's that you have enough students to make such a thing work. Uh, because the truth is that role-playing games do all those things. They just don't do them in a very focused way. They don't do them in a very focused way. So uh, there is some game-based learning, not gamification, but game-based learning, but it's not focused enough, I think, for the classroom. So if you're in the classroom, I think the most important thing uh, to consider before you do any kind of game-based learning is the idea of the outcome that you want. What is the thing that you want the student to learn? The problem with most role playing games is that they're too broadly focused to get to a particular outcome. Now, there are some exceptions. So let me give you an example of a very basic role playing game that uh, when I was in eighth grade, my eighth grade history teacher did. Uh, yeah, eighth grade. Uh, and some I've heard, I've talked to other people who had their teachers do similar things. So when we studied uh, the Great Depression, we studied the, the stock market crash, 29, uh, what the teacher did, Mr. Selge did, was he uh, essentially gave us all fake money to buy fake stocks and he created a kind of stock bubble and we spent a day kind of uh, of the class trading stocks uh, buying and selling and trying to not to lose our money. Uh, and not a big surprise, almost everyone in the class lost most of their money, um, uh, which we all already knew that the stock market bubble was going to happen. That was what was fascinating in retrospect about it. At the time, I, I, I was too young to really consider this, but interesting thing was that we knew this, we knew the market was going to crash so everyone was trying to make as much money as possible before the crash and still everyone crashed, uh, or at least 90% of the class hit the crash, uh, which suggests that even with foreknowledge, you still would get caught up in the same kind of excitement, uh, of trying to make a little bit of more money just before things go wrong. Uh, and how that 
creates a problem. So that was, in its basic sense, a kind of not just a game, but a role playing game. We were each playing a role. We weren't just moving a little piece around, a, you know, a little chiclet around a map or something. We were playing a kind of role. Model United Nations, that's a kind of role playing game, right? Uh, and so there are different ways in which we do already integrate role playing games. And so what I would say about these things I've been talking about is each of these things is actually focused on a particular goal in the same way that. If you have a child in, a, in an elementary school classroom and you have to come in and portray your favorite author and dress up like them, uh, the point of that is there is an actual outcome to get the child to do a deep dive into this author and find out more about them. And the role playing part gets at that. And so what I would argue is that role playing games uh, do have a, a place in the classroom but it must be circumscribed to very to a very tight goal. Uh, generally speaking, role playing games shouldn't be used for gamification uh, to motivate students, because in most cases, if you're doing it over the course of weeks or days, that's too much. Uh, that's too much off topic where you're spending too much time moving, uh, you know, thinking about your character and not enough time about the subject matter that you're supposed to be mastering uh, in the class. So the, the, the short version of all this is uh, that uh, schools today, especially starting in middle school, middle schools and high schools really should have role playing game clubs where they just play the games and by virtue of playing the games, they're going to buy by virtue of that automatically begin to learn about other cultures, begin to learn about statistics and begin to learn about the kinds of things that, that we often talk about. But if you're using it in the classroom, you want to focus it very tightly. Now I said I was going to end with an apology and this actually gets back to some other things uh, that we, that I did in Dragon Con. And one of the things I was most excited about was to go to the Wreck the System concert. Uh, Wreck the System uh, is the group that does the Professor Awesome and the Minions of Doom theme song. And I used to have at the end uh, of the videos, I used to have a little like uh, credits sequence and um, I lost the, the card and I thought, well, I'll make another one. And then I never did make another one. Uh, and so I haven't been giving them credit and that is shame on me because wreck the system is great. I had never gotten to actually seen them live before, uh, because they're based out of Baltimore, uh, DC area. Uh, so being here in, uh, in Alabama, I'm pretty far from there, but when they came to Atlanta, it was a great thrill to be able to see them. Uh, you know, um, can three lady J, uh, Osiris green, uh, and, uh, uh, twill distilled and mentioning twill distilled at the end, uh, and part of my penance for not, uh, crediting them after, I don't know. I am actually not sure when the credits fell off the end of these, uh, but not crediting them. Twill distilled has a new solo album that just came out called invader invader. Uh, and so, and she has promised to eat a bag of ants if she can sell enough copies. Uh, I don't actually want to see her eat a bag of ants, but I do want to see her sell enough copies of her album invader, uh, that she, uh, is uh, that she sweats a little bit, whether she has to eat a bag of ants. So uh, uh, check out Wreck the System, uh, and I hope that you enjoyed uh, thinking more about this. If you have some thoughts, especially if you're a working teacher, if you have some more thoughts about using role-play games in the classroom, and if you want to share your experiences, share them in the comments below.